Alright, yeah, more ghosts. Top 5 ghost encounters to scare you. Plus. Um, yeah, let's go. The Humpty Dew Poltergeist. In August 1997, Jim Somerville and her partner Dave Clark moved into a rental property at 19 McMinns Drive in Humpty Dew, a town Humpty located Dew. near Darwin, in Australia's Northern Territory. Everything was fine until January 1998, when Andrew and Christy Agus, along with their nearly one-year-old daughter, Jasmine, started sharing the property with them. Shortly after they moved in, strange things started happening. Random objects would be flung in the air by an unseen force, and terrifyingly, these objects appeared to be aimed at them. Glass bottles and even knives would fly through the air, and both couples felt like they were under attack. On one occasion, gravel and seashells rained down from the ceiling, and the entity tried to communicate by using scrambled tiles to spell out words, like fire, skin, help, car, and Troy. The couples believe that this may be a reference to their good friend, Troy Radatz, who had died in a fire caused by a car accident just a few miles from the property. Could it be his untimely death was responsible for the rage? Over the course of a few weeks, the activity ramped up, and scratches could be heard from inside the walls, and appliances were destroyed. Things got so bad, the couple called in a local priest, Father Stephen D'Souza, he too experienced the violence when a knife was hurled at him from a kitchen counter, falling at his feet and narrowly missing him. Another priest was called, who blessed the house and sprinkled holy water all around. And on one of his visits, the activity was so overwhelming, he left a crucifix, bible, and some vials of holy water for the couples to use if they felt threatened. However, this only seemed to anger the poltergeist further, and had flung the crucifix around the house, and threw the holy water containers against the wall. The media had also taken an interest in events, and in April 1998, news reporters entered the house with heat-seeking equipment to see for themselves the violent activity in the home. Take a look at what happened. Brendan was also witness to a particularly violent incident. He was the only person in the house when this happened. Whoa, what the? A live bullet ricocheted onto the carpet. In slow motion, it appears to have come from the ceiling, then bounced off the furniture. We taped it from two angles. Whoa, what the? Once again, no, no thermal fingerprints on it, nothing, uh, nothing that leads you to believe it was thrown by, by human. It's worth pointing out that this was a rental house, and the landlord wasn't too happy about the damage the entity was doing to his property. <laughs> and believing the tenant to be responsible, he tried to get them evicted. Ultimately, the attempt failed, no, but the couples moved out anyway, as they couldn't take any No. Work. The landlord tidied up the property and relet it. Since then, there have been no public reports of any further paranormal activity. No. But perhaps the new tenants are simply dealing with it in their own way. Today, the events at Humpty Doo are regarded as one of the most significant supernatural occupations in Australian history. Kitchen Nightmares Brad Pryor had been experiencing strange goings-on in his home for months. Things were moving, stuff was ending up on the floor, and doors appeared to open on their own. So he decided to set up a camera in his kitchen to see if he was going mad or something more sinister was going on. For weeks, nothing untoward happened until this next footage was captured in July 2016. To start with, you can see Brad leaving the kitchen and he claims 40 minutes later, this is what happened. Take a look.
So is that a poltergeist as Brad claimed? <coughs> it certainly seems like something is going on. The kitchen roll could possibly be explained if a window is open, but the ornaments and the frying pan are harder to fathom. The doors flying open, the chairs falling, and the kitchen utensils flying across the room are all classic poltergeist violence, and that box falling out of the cupboards is off the scale creepy. What do you think? Real or fake? Yeah, because that's kind of... I said it before in another one, that the, the thing that the poltergeist moved, it moved it back towards the wall, which would be harder to fake than pulling it off. And also, it's like, how would he have done that? How would he have managed to... Do you know what I mean? Things was flying out the drawer. How would he have do that? Wait, let's go. The Ghost in Red This next anomaly is a bit strange, and certainly out of place for the type of video. It appeared on the YouTube channel Haircut Harry, and was emailed to us by Hector, a Top 5's viewer. Firstly, thanks for the submission, Hector. The channel features unique barber shops around the world, showing customers getting haircuts and shaves. This one was filmed at Sweeney Ted's in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and was uploaded on March 27, 2020. The skill of the barber is fascinating, but that is not what we're looking at today. Take a look at the footage, focusing on the window. Did you notice a woman in red walking backwards before disappearing? Just for a bit of context, all the other people in the video captured walking past the window are walking forward and do not disappear at the second pane of glass. Mm. Take another look. So what's going on here? We checked the comments, but not many people seem to notice. I guess they were fixated on the haircut. So was there a ghost unintentionally captured in this video, or some other explanation? What do you think? Leave us you a comment below. You can see below. something go down the thing after. The Ghost Girl Alice Martin had always thought there was something off in the flat that she lived in with her husband Tom and baby son Louis. The TV often turned on by itself, and her son would not settle at night, and always ended up sleeping in his parents' bed. In 2020, during lockdown, Alice was scrolling through family snaps when she spotted a strange shadowy guest looming in the background. She knew that the photo had been taken in her son's room and believed the apparition may be the presence that she had felt in the home. Take a good look at this. Ah. Uh... Alice believes the strange shadowy figure looked like a little girl with long hair. Her face appeared defined and she was carrying something in her hands. Alice, who is usually skeptical of the paranormal, says she cannot explain the spooky shape as there was no furniture or items hanging on the door at the time. It spooked the entire family so much that they moved to a new flat and their son now sleeps soundly in his own bedroom. What do you think's going on here? Mm. Definitely more convincing when they leave. Our own experience. This is a very special one for you all, as we very rarely talk about personal things on this channel. We wanted to end with an experience that we had after a family member passed away. In 2010, our much-loved great-grandma passed away at age 97. She had been a huge presence in all of our lives, and with such a character, we just thought she would live to at least 100. Christmas was her favourite time of year, and it was Christmas Day that the family last saw her alive. She passed away in the early hours of Boxing Day. However, within days of her passing, the family could feel her presence everywhere. It was as if she wasn't fully gone. We could smell her perfume and sense she was still around. Things got even stranger when photographs started being moved and things randomly fell over or switched off. But perhaps the strangest thing happened to her son, my grandpa. Nearly every day in her later years, he would visit her around 4pm and take her favourite cream cake. 
After her passing, for about a month, his doorbell would ring at 4pm, but when he went to open it, there was never anyone there. The water in their home would also inexplicably turn off at certain times of the day, something that would never usually happen. Another family member had a clown ornament on his mantelpiece that once belonged to my great-grandmother, and he would come home from work and find it turned around facing the wall. Every time it was moved back the next day, it was turned around again. These strange occurrences continued for several weeks until we all felt like she had actually gone. I can confirm that all of this is 100% true. We've heard many stories from people in the past saying similar things after a loved one is gone, and we'd love to know if you've ever experienced anything similar in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow for another episode of the Creepy Marathon Month. Mm. That was quite nice to get, like, a kind of one of his own stories. Um, yeah, but that hairdressing one was weird. Just because if you was going to fake it, why fake that? It's not really, like, do you know what I mean? The most yeah, ghostly thing you could fake. If he was trying to fake something, why would that be what you think? But then maybe you think that's what people, I don't know. But yeah, to be fair with my nan, I think everybody had a creepy um, thing. When my nan died, like a creepy experience. Well, yeah, whether it be someone sitting on the bed that there's no one there or whatever, do you know what I mean? Things like that. But yeah, yeah, I do love a ghost video, I have to say, and a ghost story. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet.